Starfield. 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 Starfield tried to do many things. And today, I have compiled the list of games set in the future and space with Starfield-like gameplay features. Some games would be old, others would be fresh out of the oven 2023 releases. And it is all about gameplay, not always graphics. Gameplay focus of this list is the following. There will be space combat, space sandbox simulation, space exploration, story-driven space RPG, spaceship construction and space theme factory automation, and finally, the one last entry that will do almost everything on this gameplay list. Some games would require hours of brainstorming to get into the beef of gameplay, but others are pretty much propelling you into the action immediately in the first several minutes. In this video, everyone can find part they like about Starfield and experience it through better variation of a game. As always, feel free to leave your favorite space games in the comments down below. And let's go! X4 Foundations is one of the bigger games on this list. X-Series is a long-standing powerhouse of space simulation games. The latest DLC for X4 is Kingdom's End, released early 2023. The good parts about this game are the space combat and sandbox economy encompassing multitude of star systems. Unlike every stupid non-Newtonian spaceflight game, you can totally pull off drifting while shooting backwards like it's Expanse or Babylon 5. You can fly anything as a mere pilot, or you can command whole squadrons of starfighters and even fleets of battleships and carriers. You can sit on the deck of your starfighter, dock to a bigger gunship, dock to a carrier, and you can walk between those ships and fly the carrier while ordering the gunship for recon missions or to engage some pirates. The game consists from multitude of star systems systems, divided into the sectors that have real-time economic simulation evolving on its own over time. Every sector have factories producing goods for other factories that in the end produce spaceships. All the logistics and supply chains are done by NPCs, and you can become one of those traders, technically doing the same good old buy low, sell high for your own profit. Also you can become one of those Bandits! Or you can just work for one of those in-game factions doing some missions. Eventually you can have enough capital to start making your own space factories, supply chains and even build whole fleets of battleships and carriers at your command. Game have, well, it have story. There are a total of something about 200 different ships to fly and modify in the game with all the DLCs. And there are some big points about X4 that may stop a lot of players from enjoying the game. First of all, this is a huge game, way bigger than Starfield. Whatever you want to do, you will need to look up some tutorials to fast track a lot of in-game systems. Exploring all the possibilities of X4 require a lot of time in a good sense. Next mediocre part is UI. It is decent and gets the job done, but often you will feel like you are playing spreadsheet simulator like it's EVE Online. Well, at least with X4 you are not driven by constant paranoia. Another downgrade is the story depth and, well, NPC interactions. But well, Starfield is pretty bad at this as well, and obvious elephant in the room is complete lack of any planets or FPS elements. But well, it is pretty clear that X4 is more about growing your own space empire rather than being on the front lines. Everspace 2 had been released in the early 2023 and it was left pretty much unnoticed by mainstream player base. However, it is one of the most new player-friendly space combat simulators I have ever played. On the one hand, it is not complex enough for hardcore space simulator enjoyers and not popular enough for mainstream crowd on the other end. Some can even call it a simplified X4 Foundations or Diablo in space. The game has story that devolves into the fetch quest after fetch quest somewhere on the level of lackluster story of Starfield. However, where the game's story shines is the art direction with 2D animations and very solid voice acting. Many character is fully voiced and overall if you couple 2D art with very good moment to moment writing and solid voice acting, well, it just makes me care way way more about those characters in Everspace 2 than about those zombie husks with AI generated dialogues from Starfield. Main gameplay loop is to fly a spaceship to blow up other spaceships and to collect some loot. Over time you are upgrading your spaceship with increasing in rarity of weapons and modules while leveling up your character and abilities. There are a multitude of choices how to customize your 
starship, you can be anything from long range sniper with railguns and fast retreat whoosh whoosh ability, to close combat brawler with shotguns, mines and armor melting acid thingy thingy. Add to that multitude of choices when it comes to ship platforms and quite impressive customization system when it comes to ship visuals. Even the same platform can look vastly different. For example, you can even customize engine plume colors, color of cockpit, color of cockpit, color of cockpit glass and color of LEDs. And finally, we have quite simple crafting system if we are struggling to find specific slot upgrades in the wild. There are simple trading and economy systems in the game and crafting is based around dismantling items you collect, so there are definitely quite a lot of things to hunt down. Everspace 2 utilizes one of the better variations when it comes to loading screens and you actually feel like you are traveling around the solar system even with glorified loading screens. And very often your loading screen is filled with story-related chatter. Also, majority of side missions are actually spawned in the middle of your loading screen and you can beeline for some loot. While I can definitely be contrarian and just trash talk Starfield development budget being like 400% that of uh, Everspace 2 and failing to have like 10% of loading screen immersion, actual reality of Everspace 2 is quite simple. Everspace 2 is very solid, medium-sized game that propels you right into the action and can be one of those games that you just pick up for small but fun 30-minute play session once in a while. Can you just imagine? Starfield releasing 10 years ago. Well, it would just bomb and tank, because back then we had powerhouse of space RPGs, Mass Effect. Mass Effect have interesting plotline with multitude of choices and outcomes, overarching trilogy of games and hundreds of gameplay hours. There is updated legendary edition with better graphics and, well, some questionable cuts, and if you never tried Mass Effect, I highly recommend to start from the second installment. First game have a lot of questionable gameplay decisions on the level of, well, Starfield quality, which is not great to say the least, and if you are really into the story, you can always go back and play the first game. And most important, there is an option to play the story of the first game as interactive comics at the start of the second game, and you will make all the important decisions uh, that you would made while actually playing the first game. This was done because uh, back in the day, first game was exclusive somewhere, I don't remember where, and they just made this option for the second game when it was releasing on PS3, I think. In any case, it just baked into the Legendary Edition and you just can skip the first game while actually making all the important decisions. For all intended purpose, second game is a complete experience. Third game is direct sequel for the second game and have pretty much the same gameplay mechanics as the second one. Only the first game is a bit dated and wonky. While Mass Effect story is the highlight of experience, the gameplay is your cover-based shooter where you command and deploy small team of companions. There is a selection of classes, weapons and Jedi-like powers for every character. There are a total of 22 companion characters in the trilogy and half of those are introduced in the second installment. And not everyone would survive, especially in some playthrough variations of the second game. If you are into space RPGs, just play Mass Effect 2. What if you are done with blowing up things and just mostly want to build some spaceships? What if you want to make your own designs from the ground up instead of just modifying the library of existing designs and parts? Well. Space Engineers got you covered. Not only this is a space survival game, but it is also the game where you build your fleet of own spaceships with Lego-like package of blocks. Some can call it Minecraft in space, but it is not really. Initially it was rather small indie game released into early access 10 years ago, and while development prior to 1.0 had multiple of ups and downs, it is truly remarkable game 10 years later. And even to this day, Space Engineers receive constant minor updates. Basic gameplay loop is to mine some resources and to build uh, bigger ships. Players can build not only spaceships but also space stations, then you can just put space station on the surface of the planet and call it a post, then build a tank, jet. Whatever you want, honestly. Or just you can make huge flying banana like I did once. <laughs> also, then you can pilot your creations and travel for space to explore other planets to mine other resources. And also, like, you can be just spaceborne engineer and gather stuff from asteroids because space have stuff, you know? Actually can sound as a really boring game, but this is ultimately just a creativity tool unless you if you are playing multiplayer. Steam Workshop have hundreds of thousands of entries of spaceships created by players, from Millennium Falcon to X-Wings and Rosinante and Serenity or Flying Banana, whatever you want, honestly. And this game definitely becomes whole another level of fun if you account for multiplayer.
All right, maybe you have limited amount of time, but still want to enjoy Space Empire building game. Previously mentioned the X4 Foundations is a great game, but it required quite the time investment even to get going. And Star Sector is one of those indie games that look awful at first glance, but actually is a hidden gem. Top-down perspective and sprite-based graphics definitely take you way, way back, and the game also is made on Java. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but beneath this retro technology is some awesome features. You start as captain of small ship and you are in the star sector in the middle of collapse and crisis. Arr, piracy is rampant, black market have selection of harvested organs, corporations are the best variation of capitalism, chairs and spoons on your spaceship are copyright protected, religious groups have unlimited supply of weaponry and rare occasion of government authority is just busy collecting bribes and well, um, actually reasonable taxes if you compare it to real life. You can explore and survey the edges of known space or you can be commander of battle fleet, becoming a mercenary or arr, pirate or you can just smuggle some harvested organs and lobsters on the black market with transporter off. In any case, you will manage a fleet composition for various tasks and playstyles. There are plenty of ship hulls and weapons to choose from, and skill tree with hull mods allow for very decent amount of variation with every single ship hull. Any fleet will need supplies, crew and fuel, opening the logistical can of worms even if you are playing pure battle fleet. Safe to say that you will need tankers, cargo ships, salad tricks and, well, to buy low and sell high your goods. There is only around dozen of goods in the game and trading is as easy as just as pressing F1 in the com range and delivering goods to the better destinations. Or you can just make artificial demand by intercepting convoys and by selling their cargo at outrageous prices on the black market at their destination. Yeah. Coupled with only two axes to manage, this makes this game very easy to enjoy. And well, in the end of the day, nothing can be better than situation bombardment of any known habitable planet in Star Sector at 4 am. Starfield tried to do space combat, but in reality it is just mobile arcade game at best. Also you can skip the whole system if you are just using quest menu, which is idiotic at best. And well, while X4 Foundations and Everspace 2 on this list have the great space combat, they are not the best that you can get. Also this entry is entirely focused on space combat, so there is nothing in between action. Descent Free Space – The Great War this game have done non-Newtonian space combat better than anyone else ever since. And this game was released in 1998, 25 years ago. Also, the main starship from all the promotional materials for the Starfield and from the first part of the game is basically the 25-year-old plagiarism from this game. Uh, this is the Medusa bomber and basically uh, the only thing that they have done, they just replaced the rocket pods with some VTOL engines to land on the planets and make it a bit bigger and just added some detail because, well, we can in this day and age. Yeah. One can say, this is just a coincidence, come on, you're making the iconic design for your promotional material, you should do better. And also by this logic I can say that, well, this science fiction novel from the Soviet Union, Hard to be a God by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky, well, it totally doesn't have like Millennium Falcon on the cover. This particular book cover was published in 1985, and by the way, the science fiction itself is pretty awesome. Like, this is one of the best that we can get from that era. Alright, Descent Free Space. Over the course of the campaign you get selection of various fighters and small gunships. Also you get to command fighter wings on missions and, well, stakes are high and choosing properly suited machines and weapons for the task is very important. Also you can get medals for extraordinary performance in the life and death situations, which is basically your achievements, but way more better. A sound design is awesome and definitely permanently imprinted into my 10 year old brain at the time. 25 years later I still hear those sounds when I play other space games. Like, Definitely. <laughs> this is so bad. And while visuals are obviously dated, gameplay and distinct design of Starfighters making it up for everything else. The original game and sequel are actually ported to work with modern systems and it was done with Georgia release. And while I had some issues with my 4K system, it was absolutely fine on my potato 1080p system. Issue that I had on my 4K system was pretty much resolved with 640 by 480 compatibility. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Compatib <sighs> Man, this word. Compatibility. Ah, I could not say it. Compatibility on. I'm French now. What the hell? Uh, just choose this thingy and it will work on 4K system. And the issue was that my keyboard just was not working correctly in the first menu. Another downside is the requirement to use numpad over mouse for the craft controls by the default, but this is fixable by enabling mouse in option settings. But there is another issue that there is no invert mouse option, so I was still kind of forced to use my old keyboard with numpad. 
And overall, this is like a solid game, and if you can live with dated graphics, well, it is time for a little dose of 20th century nostalgia. Starfield want to be a factory automation game on top of everything else, and in reality it is not really. A lot of steps like logistic is just replaced by UI, which is huge game development no no. Also like, what the hell, you have this immersive world where you should have vehicles, starships, you know, you are constructing outposts, you should have some life here, but instead of that we have UI lines. Yeah. And overall you can just explain the entirety of Starfield Outpost construction under one hour. But what if you are really enjoying this small mini mini game and want to become a baron of industry on the surface of a planet? Well, Satisfactory got you covered. This is one of the greatest automation games out there and it is only rivaled by Factorio. In Satisfactory you are tasked by a corporation to extract resources and build parts to be sent with space elevator to an orbit. And while the game is still in early access, it definitely has surpassed the, well, price point, I think like years years ago. Satisfactory have at least hundreds of hours of gameplay if you are into factory automation and simple math. And once again, considering their early access, well, Satisfactory updates are more stable and bug free than almost every single AAA game releasing lately. There is a clear progression in the game and every two tiers your factory automation puzzle will jump in the difficulty. Every resource and product produced by your factories can be automated in multiple ways thanks to the plethora of unlockable alternative recipes and oftentimes the most efficient automation is not the one you will be choosing for a variety of reasons. So every playthrough can be very different depending on your approach and location of the factory. Then there is the whole level of logistics and not only you can just transport everything with the belts, but also you can transport resources with trucks, drones and trains. And the trains is probably the game of its own, so a lot of satisfactory players will call this game a glorified train simulator. And the funny thing that you can just completely skip that part and play with only trucks and belts or whatever combination you like. Uh, another very glorious feature is the amount of visual customization that you can bring to your factory exteriors. Ever-expanding toolset of building blocks allow to build incredible things for almost any taste. And once again, if you are into factory automation and some math, Satisfactory is one of the best games out there. And finally, we are here with one game that actually do almost everything Starfield try to achieve. But better. Warframe began as pretty basic looter shooter MMO light game, but over the years it turned into a remarkable Space Ninja Jedi simulator. Although the game have instant world in its core, there are plenty of open world locations and you can even fly your own personal starship into the battle. Freedom of movement in this game is incredible, and gun, melee weapon and ability selection is truly remarkable. So let's do the simple list. Warframe have good gunplay. Check. Warframe have incredible movement freedom. Check. Warframe have space battles to fight on your own custom starship. Check. Warframe have planets with open world locations to explore. Check. It is a story driven RPG. Check. You can craft things. Check. Leveling up abilities and warframes. Check. A uh, story with almost no player agency? Um, yeah, check. I am honestly surprised by the fact that everybody tries to compare Starfield to No Man's Sky. Let's be real, No Man's Sky is a very specific game that, well, caters to zen-like gameplay exploration. Meanwhile, Starfield is very different from the No Man's Sky. It is purely instant shooter with some sludge in between that is randomly generated and have no value whatsoever for the gameplay, there are like arcade space battles and very basic story written by AI. And well, Warframe have just done every part of that way better, and some parts of Warframe were developed like 10 years ago. Main selling point of Warframe that is, well, free, everyone can try it, and you can play hundreds of hours and not spend a dime. Honestly, there is not a lot of things forcing you to spend real money to progress in the game, and I'm for sure spent more on buying Skyrim multiple times than, well, on 500 hours of Warframe. Uh, also, there is this thing that everybody talk about Starfield, like you should play 50 hours of Starfield and it's get better. It is not, because basic gameplay loop is garbage, but in Warframe, in the same amount of time, first of all, you will have fun, second of all, you will progress and have actually better things to do. If there is a choice to play 50 hours of Warframe again, or 50 hours of brand new game like Starfield. Honestly, I will choose Warframe. Yeah, this is bizarre. <laughs>
Alright, so there is another honorable mention, the game that I cut from the list, and that one is the Hard Space Ship Breaker. Honestly, very different game from everything else on the list, and it's very different from Starfield, but if you want to play something new, well, here you go, Hard Space Ship Breaker, check this game out. Also, if you have other games that are not mentioned in this video and you are enjoying it very much, well, just leave the comment down below and explain why it's better than any part of Starfield gameplay. And I think this is the wrap. Thank you very much for watching, have a nice one, and Yakis, out!